r slash ask reddit lawyers of reddit what was your oh shit moment in court sat in on a personal injury case where the plaintiff broke their leg in an accident and had a doctor on the stand as an expert the woman's lawyer begins questioning the doctor about their experience with leg injuries he was a well-known orthopedic surgeon in the area she asks if he's ever treated a tibular fracture the leg bones are tibia and fibula to which he only answers no then she starts grilling him with questions about the tibula after about six seven questions she asks how did you get to medical license and have been able to practice medicine this long if you've never treated a tibula fracture and begins a small rant about going after his credentials and those that gave it to him to which he simply responds there is no bone named the tibula. The lawyer became beat red and everyone in the room tried their best to keep from laughing including the judge. Oh god I can feel the second hand embarrassment. I was representing a plaintiff in a hit and run case. Plaintiff is testifying and is. Despite me preparing them for several hours the previous day. An absolutely terrible witness for her own case. Like. She couldn't even identify the street she was crossing when she was hit by the car. It was a major highway and we had gone through the sequence of events countless times the day before the hearing. The oh shit moment came during cross-examination. Defense counsel pulls out a picture of my client dressed up and ready to hit the club which was posted to Facebook the day after the alleged accident. I, thinking quickly, object because the timestamp refers to when it was posted, not when it was taken. Defense counsel show the picture to my client and asked her when the picture was taken. Sure enough, they say it was taken the day after the accident when she was supposedly in unbearable pain. Oh. Shit. Not your fault. Good thing it happened too. It means justice is served. When I was in college, I was a bailiff. Guys on trial for murder. First witness testified that she saw the defendant shoot the victim. Second witness states the same. Police officer testimony is that he arrived at the scene and defendant was there holding the gun. Coroner testimony is that the first bullet hit the victim in the arm. The second bullet hit the victim in the torso and the third bullet hit the victim in the heart which was the fatal shot. Defendant yells out see that proves that I didn't kill him. I only shot the mother ducker twice. I was a baby lawyer in my first year representing the 19 year old child of some rich people in San Mateo County CA. My client had gone on a bit of a shoplifting spree and we were cleaning all her cases up with a global plea, meaning we handled them all at once. Being new, I filled out the plea form wrong swapping the counts she was charged with for the counts she was pleading to. It's an easy mistake to make. Every court has their own unique form and I was unfamiliar with San Mateos. The judge calls my line, starts reading off the plea form. Notices the mistake and then starts screaming at the top of his lungs counsel. What is this? Is this your first day on the job? This is a court floor and we do not accept mistakes. Fill this plea form right correctly or I will have you taken into custody for contempt. I did not expect a reaction like that. My client, who had clearly just taken a huge bong rip at 8am and who was wearing an all pink velvet tracksuit was looking at me like I was the biggest idiot in the world. I corrected the plea form. The judge made me wait until the very end of the calendar to take my plea. Afterward, he called me up to the bench. In private he told me, sorry to ream you like that. Everyone messes the plea form up so I always pick the youngest lawyer to yell at. The older guys will grumble and complain. But if you notice they all fix their own forms and we didn't have any more problems. Keeps the calendar running smooth. Where did you go to law school? After that he invited me into his office for coffee and gave me some really good life work advice. Turns out he likes talking to new lawyers. TL. DR. Judge losses his shit in court over a simple mistake. Turns out it was all a show for the other lawyers and I have one of the worst best court experiences of my early career. I am stupid. I 1000% initially thought baby lawyer meant that you were a lawyer that represented babies. Represented a woman charged with multiple very serious felonies. She insisted that in the months before the offense, she'd been seriously dating one of the detectives who ultimately wound up investigating and testifying in her case. For a variety of reasons. I trusted this client and believed her, even though the detective never disclosed the relationship in his report. So, during his testimony, I asked Detective Smith, you had a romantic relationship with Ms. Defendant, correct? He goes what? No, and is visibly offended. 
The judge arcs at me like I've lost my mind. The commonwealth attorney audibly says what? I'm freaking out because a large part of my cross and argument was focused on the bias formed by the prior relationship. And now I've got nothing and I've lost all credibility. I try again. Detective Smith. Have you had a sexual relationship with Miz? Defendant. As the commonwealth rises to object and the judge starts to scold me. The detective goes oh. Yay. We've had sex. It just wasn't very. Romantic. Edit update. State is Virginia. The jury acquitted my client of the relatively minor charge that the detective and my story was involved with. But convicted of the other. Much more serious charges that detective had nothing to do with. There was a confession and video on the serious charges. So it was kind of a no brainer. Sorry I'm being kind of intentionally vague. There are no confidentiality concerns since this all happened in open court. But it's distasteful to give out too much information about a client. The detective was not disqualified. His testimony was not thrown out. Impeachment, no matter how good, doesn't result in you getting to throw out a witness's testimony entirely. By the way, it wasn't really the sex that was the issue. It was that he didn't disclose it to anyone and his repeated insistence under questioning that he didn't disclose it because it was irrelevant. Like Watergate, it's not the crime, it's the cover up that gets you. But I don't get to demand the judge throw out the testimony or that charge just because the cop failed to disclose a prior relationship with the defendant. I just get to point it out, argue it in closing, and then hope the jury also sees the relevance. Who do you mean the sex? Yes, there was that. UK, bear with me on this one. I was in court listening to the most boring old defense lawyer you've ever seen. He was questioning the arresting officer in the case. It was drugs or something like that. Anyway, he's droning on about every little detail and the magistrate was constantly telling him to hurry along. The arresting officer was getting noticeably annoyed and the room became empty pretty quick. Everyone was very bored and annoyed. He was droning about details that I'm not sure anyone was really listening to or cared about. Anyway. He went over arrest times and the likes with the officer. Time he admitted the suspect and released him. He had bored the officer to the point where he was barely paying attention. So he was admitted in at 21.45 on the night in question? Yes. And released the night after? Yes. And that was what? Just after 10 p.m. Yes what time after 10? I don't know. Quarter past 10 maybe so my client was detained for more than 24 hours um. Wait. The penny dropped. The officer let his guard down and had revealed he kept the defendant for more than 24 hours. Which is the max time for detention in the UK. The defense rested and the magistrate threw the case out immediately. Well played sir. Well played. So like. Shouldn't time of arrest and time of release be duckying documented? Is that something they doctor on a regular basis? Seems like the attorney should have just been able to grab these records. I think this qualifies. Though it wasn't me that was the lawyer. Got called for jury duty, was at the jury selection phase, and they asked if anyone here thinks they should not. Blah blah. Defendant was in the room. I raised my hand. The defending lawyer looked at me like oh this ought to be good and asked me to explain. I suggested I tell them in private. He insisted I tell the courtroom. I said, okay, I probably shouldn't be on this jury because I was on a previous jury for this man which returned a guilty verdict. Lawyer's face went oh shit dart commotion and await while they looked up records. Yep, verified. Whole jury was now tainted dart everyone goes home. And they start over. After reading other stories in this thread, it sounds like you saved yourself quite a tongue lashing by suggesting that it be in private. Damn you even asked to say it in private. They should have known better than to tell the courtroom. When I had jury selection there was a notepad and pen for anyone who wanted to privately explain why they felt they should be exempt. It was such a simple solution to let the judge and lawyer see the reason before deciding. I was interning for a judge. We were in the middle of voir dire. For what was frankly not that exciting of a criminal case. Half day trial expected. Not salacious details or violence or anything. 75 potential jurors in the room. And when my judge didn't let a guy out of jury duty because he'd have to pick up his kids that guy proceeded to say in front of everyone that if he was made to show up next week he'd make it the shortest trial ever and find him guilty right out of the gate. My judge was an incredibly even keel guy. Nothing shook him or got a rise out of him. 
and he was an expert at figuring out what he wanted to say in the most neutral fashion possible before he said it. Conversations with him took forever because there was a pause before every sentence. But then, but then, this guy poisons an entire jury pool of 75 people. We had to individually question each person to see if that little outburst was going to affect their impartiality, etc. 75 in camera interviews later. Judge pulls the guy back in in front of everybody and begins to scream at him about disrespecting him. The courts. And every other juror's time. Me. The attorneys. And the court reporter go white face because we didn't know this was coming. The guy didn't have to sit for jury duty. But I still don't know if he got to pick his kids up. Since he spent a couple days in jail for contempt. I was involved in a pretty messy custody case. The other party was a mess and had kept the child from my client for a few weeks. OP was playing lots of stupid games and kept requesting continuances. I requested a drug test, which the judge ordered. However, the OP didn't show up for it. To clarify, he did show up. He just stood in front of the toilet for literally 2 hours and claimed he couldn't pee. I was representing the plaintiff so the burden was on me. I called multiple witnesses that testified to the defendant's drug use. So, opposing counsel decides to call their client for direct examination and asks, you don't use heroin and crack, right? That is, for the non-lawyers, a very stupid question for many reasons, especially considering his client didn't show up for his drug test. However, I fully expected the defendant to just lie and say he was clean. After the question was asked, there was a really long pause and the defendant said, yes, I do both of those drugs. My head almost exploded. I didn't ask any questions on cross-examination because I didn't want to muddy the waters. I won. And the child is doing great. Not mine but my boss's one. She had to defend a small time delinquent as duty solicitor. Before going to court he asked her what he should do. She explained to him if he was cooperative and truthful his sentence would be milder. After hearing the case the judge asked him if he wanted to add something. He got up and explained to the judge. My counsel told me to be truthful. So I wanted to tell you that I not only did the robbery I'm being heard for but also several others in the region. He continued to admit to several robberies that had been unsolved yet and everyone. Even the state attorney were facipaming. Mine actually happened while I was sitting in the jury pool during via dire. The case was a double homicide. And the jury pool filled the entire courtroom. If you're not familiar with via dire it is when the lawyers ask the potential jurors questions to determine who they want to sit on the jury and who they want to exclude. It is a long and boring process for almost everyone involved. But 9 stroke 10 it's the most important stage in a case. So the lawyers are asking us questions and if that question applied to you. You raised your hand and they handed you a microphone to answer the question. The question asked was do you or anyone you know have prior knowledge of this case? So this elder gentleman raised his hand, is handed the mic, and proceeds to say yeah I work at the police station as a janitor, and I heard two detectives talking about him points to defendant and they were saying he was about as guilty as sin. We all kind of stared open mouthed at this guy, and I started chuckling because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Naturally, the defense attorney asked to approach the bench followed quickly the by the state prosecutor. After some quick and energetic whispering, the judge addressed the man. Do you realize what you just did? You potentially poisoned this entire jury pool. I will be calling your boss and you will be hearing about this. You can count on that. You are dismissed sir. But this isn't over. The man was escorted out and then the judge addressed the remaining jury pool which was still in a mostly packed room. Now I want you all to disregard what that man just said. I'm sure if any of you were ever accused of a crime like this you would want a fair trial. And not be condemned based on the words of one old man. I have been in court many times since. But never have I seen that level of downright jaw dropping absurdity again. Literally the first thing I ever did. Was just a law student intern. Guy has a legit defense on a drug possession case. Drugs found in a jacket. Guy wasn't wearing jacket. They were going to have a very difficult time proving the jacket belonged to my guy. Had a long meeting with client. Explained everything. Client was excited. Day of the preliminary hearing. Guy shows up and sits down directly in front of the officer who arrested him. Dut. While wearing the jacket in question. The exact same jacket we were going to say they couldn't prove belonged to him. 
But, why? Not in court but at a tribunal, and also I was plaintiff, suing for wrongful termination, my rep, so you terminated him because he was ill, employer, yes, mister, and he was ill because he is disabled, employer, yes, mister, so you fired someone for being disabled, employer, yes, edit, formatting and a word, dot, well, at least they were honest, I'm hoping you got compensated appropriately for your trouble? was in court for a directions hearing. The judge was already in a bad mood and asked why we were here for such a seemingly pointless litigation, without giving details. He was right. The barrister starts to make our case, and I am taking notes about areas we need to further explore when I hear. Excuse me. Why were you so rude to any? The client, who had been told to not come, had come to court that day and was evidently incensed by the judge questioning the merit of their case. They berated the judge for about 3 minutes, with me and my co-counsel first stunned and then trying to shut them up. Before he adjourned the hearing, the case did not go very well. To my client's surprise and fury, big sigh. Not me but my former law partner, she was in court representing a client, I think in a hearing for a restraining order against her soon to be ex-husband. Our client was telling the judge that when they met to exchange the children for visitation, the ex had kicked her. He immediately angrily shouted she can't prove it. I didn't leave a mark. Thanks, buddy. Probably the funniest one I ever came across happened to a colleague. We were prosecutors then. 18 year old defendant applying for bail. He needed a residential address and got his dad to show up at court to confirm that the family home was available to him. Defense lawyer gets old dad to confirm that son can stay at family home. Dad says yes. My fellow prosecutor gets up and asks dad, do you really want him home? Dad goes off the deep end. Jesus. The grief he's brought me and his mother. Out all hours. Taking drugs. Hiding stolen property in the garage. All night parties. I'm on antidepressants and the wife's had a nervous breakdown. Dad goes off on one for five solid minutes. As the defendant gets taken back to the cells, he calls out thanks dad. I owe you one. Ro, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content more it's free and that's a great price.